Hello again everybody, welcome to uh, an extra edition of, well, kind of indie car, an evening special. Um, I noticed recently that um, SNP politicians have been mentioning a strap line. Now this strap line is the so-called well-being economy. Now, this I've heard mentioned several times, <coughs> not least of which was tonight um, in an interview between uh, Dr Mark McNaught on uh, Independence Life and Philippa Whitford of the SNP. And she mentioned the well-being economy as well. Now, so far I've heard this strap line quite a lot. Nobody has explained what that means. Um, we understand what well-being means, we understand what an economy is, but an economy as we know it at the moment is not set up to produce well-being. The economy is set up uh, to benefit private companies and to pay dividends to investors and to pay the high salaries of senior executives whilst keeping the wages of the, um, the workforce as low as possible. Now that is not a recipe uh, for well-being as we know. Now, comparing the idea of a well-being economy just for a moment with Boris Johnson's so-called levelling up strap line, um, I mean, it's, it's like chalk and cheese. The two ideas are diametrically opposite. They are so far away from each other, you, you wouldn't credit it. Boris Johnson's speech today where he said that um, he was going to level up, he was going to give you know free football pitches to the poor, he was going to dish out money for a railway track that doesn't go to Scotland but use Scottish tax money to build it, and that um, in doing so, in spreading this so-called largesse around, I think it was £111 million, pounds, which is tiny, a tiny amount of money uh, to be given over to a temporary job creation scheme for young people, is nothing really. Um, in terms of levelling things up, when he said in the next breath, but don't worry wealthy people, we are not uh, going to make you any poorer, and he said he didn't want to decapitate the tallest poppies. I don't know if Boris Johnson understands what a poppy is, but a poppy is a flower that grows on a battlefield after everybody's been killed and the ground's been destroyed and broken up. So what Boris Johnson is saying is that he wants whoever survives the, the battlefield of Brexit and has millions of pounds to be left alone and not to have to pay any extra tax in order to sort of allegedly level up. But you cannot level a millionaire up with somebody who's earning minimum wage. It's just a nonsense. Uh, and to actually even say that they're levelling things up is a total lie. But let's come back to the Scottish strap line of a well-being economy. What would that be? Uh, I, I racked my brains tonight to think about how a well-being economy would work. And um, I'm at a loss because the SNP has used the so-called, um, what did they call it, the, the, the Growth Commission report. Now, this was the, the study that they commissioned by economists, by strategists, political uh, scientists and all the rest of it to come up with a potential economy for an independent version of Scotland. But the way they came, what they actually came up with was a mini me version of the UK economy, where for reasons that are never explained, Scotland decides that it's actually going to pay a lot of money to England as compensation for us taking back what was always ours in the first place, which are the powers of our parliament. Now that, to me, is not going to produce a well-being economy. And the idea that um, somehow a, a well-being economy will arise out of um, private wealth, out of private investment in public limited companies, uh, in PLCs, multinationals, limited corporations, is nonsense because all of these uh, commercial bodies exist to make money, to make their directors richer, not to produce a well-being economy for the rest of us. So the only thing I can see that would actually enable a well-being economy after independence would be to simply take control of all of Scotland's national resources, all of its energy resources, all of its fish stocks, um, all of its land, all of its food, its fuel, gas, oil, everything renewable energy, non-renewable energy, uh, everything that Scotland currently has inside its territory. And instead of allowing the private sector to continue to profit from that and enrich themselves, take it into public ownership. Because if you want people to be well 
And to be well, you have to eat well, you have to live well, you have to be able to travel well, you have to be able to keep healthy, you have to be mentally healthy, and that means you need support and you need help to do that. And at the moment, nobody gets that. Uh, not unless they're at death's door or they have already developed a mental illness or a physical illness or a disability. We always wait until it's too late to help people. So if we're going to have a well-being economy, first of all, we need to decide that everybody has a right to well-being. And I have mentioned this many times before. The way that you do that is that you guarantee that as a human right by writing a constitution which states that everybody in the country has a right to well-being, to having a home, to having sufficient and healthy food, to having enough money so that they can have a small percentage of their income left aside for just having fun instead of just existing as they do now. So well-being economy would need to nationalise all of Scotland's natural resources and that would mean forming a giant Scottish National Energy Corporation which would be in charge of all of our resources including oil, gas, renewables, fish, tidal energy, you name it, everything that we have got in abundance, even rainwater and drinking water, all of these resources need to be controlled not by the corporations, but by a central Scottish uh, resources agency. And what that agency would do would be to make sure that the prices that are paid by people in Scotland for the resources which actually belong to them in the first place are not subject to profiteering. And that would mean that um, an energy company, for example, the one which the SNP has talked about forming, an energy com company run by the Scottish Government on behalf of the people would basically hire the energy firms that are currently running various power stations, solar arrays and wind turbine farms and all the rest of it to bid to produce energy at the lowest cost. Get them to compete with one another to see who can get the contract to supply the whole of Scotland with energy at a fixed price, which is then passed on to all the consumers. Now that would mean that everybody in the country would get their energy at exactly the same cost, regardless of their wealth uh, and regardless of their ability to pay. Now, if you do this and you remove the profit motive, in other words, you make these companies cut each other's throats, basically, to get the energy to the Scottish agency at the lowest possible cost, then the profiteering motive that currently exists and the competition between these companies, which have basically fixed the prices of energy amongst six huge corporations, would end. That monopoly, that, um, that cabal that exists at the moment would be broken. Now, there's one other thing I think that would make that particular idea work, and that would be if all um, companies and corporations operating in Scotland had had to use a large proportion of whatever profits they made to create new jobs, uh, to create new means of production, and to extend uh, the manufacturing or the extraction of energy in Scotland so that it exports more. If they were rewarded for employing more people, investing more money in developing renewables that could be sold abroad, then Scotland's population could have the cheapest energy anywhere in the world because it belongs to them in the first place in exchange for which these corporations would be allowed to take profits on whatever energy they exported out of Scotland. Now in this way Scottish people benefit then because they own the energy in the first place. These companies are given the right to exploit that energy and profit from it if they export it. But when they are feeding it in to the Scottish national grid, which incidentally also should be publicly owned and not for profit, then that energy comes to us virtually at cost price. And that would mean that everyone would be able to afford their electricity bills, everyone would be able to run their electric cars, nobody would have to suffer with cold in the wintertime. Now that's just one instance of how you would achieve a well-being economy. Then if you take other resources, for example water, we've got loads of it, right? probably more than we can actually use in a lifetime in a small country like this. Certain um, reservoirs and locks in Scotland are already used for drinking water. Loch Catrin 
springs to mind instantly, and there, there will be others. Um, so this natural resource of some of the finest drinking water in the world is something which is underexploited. And again, that water could be supplied virtually at no cost to everybody in the country in exchange for the water company having the right to export uh, surplus water to other countries, either through pipelines to places like uh, like England, for example, which suffers water shortages frequently. Ireland as well, pipelines can be laid almost anywhere, or even just filling up huge tankers full of this stuff and sailing it off to the Middle East, where drinking water is terrible. All of these things can be done, and taking the profit motive from these large companies and, and basically telling them that they can profit only from exports means that you build a bargain with the private enterprises who provide electricity, who provide water and gas and so on, so that they serve the nation first and what is left, what surpluses they generate or produce, are theirs to export at any price they like. Now, if you make that agreement with these multinationals, then, as I say, the country's uh, resources are serving its people. So in the first place, that would mean that we wouldn't need to raise wages as high as we would if we allow the energy companies to continue making profits from us. If they're making profits from other people, fine, you know, that's the export business. Other people will pay what they will pay for our resources. But it's like in, in Saudi Arabia, let me give you an example. In Saudi Arabia, there's no taxation. Why not? Well, because everybody is so wealthy, because they don't need taxation to pay for their hospitals, for their roads and the rest of it. The government has loads and loads of money to spend from its oil because its state controls the oil, not individual companies. And some companies will obviously come in to exploit that oil, but the Saudi Arabians obviously have a deal with them. And that deal is that they get a huge chunk uh, of the percentage of the price of a barrel of oil or petrol goes straight to the government. Now, even sharing like that uh, in percentage terms would make Scotland one of the wealthiest uh, countries on the planet. And divvying up that wealth can either be done through um, extra benefits being given to people because we have an inflow of, uh, of revenue constantly from these resources like oil, like gas, like renewables, where we take a percentage. There's, there's lots of different models of this, but none of these models and none of these ideas are being talked about. There is nothing and no detail coming from the SNP about this idea of a well-being economy. Now, an economy which looks after people as its core um, reason for existing has to have a much larger public sector, because if you want to look after your people, you need to employ others to do that. As we get older and live longer, we need more care. And that means that the, the care sector has to be enlarged. And I also think that the idea of caring for people in care homes where you pay a fee for them to stay there in basically an institution is something that we need to stop doing. Because a, it makes the families of those whose relatives are placed into those care homes guilty um, for failing their elderly relatives for not being able to look after them. That could be ended quite simply um, by having enough staff who could live in with that individual and look after them nearer home or at home even. And that can be done. And moving uh, care away from institutional settings and into family settings reduces the stresses on families, increases their well-being, and reduces also the stress and the um, the upset which many elderly people, particularly those with dementia, um, feel because they are confused, they're frightened, they don't know where they are. So there are ways in which the entire economy could be changed, and I believe. Far from cutting public spending on health, it should be doubled at least. The entire um, health and care sector needs to be enlarged. It should be the biggest industry in a country because the one thing the country must do uh, and the government's first duty, as we have learned through COVID, is to prevent people from coming to harm and also to, if we're building a well-being economy, to ensure their well-being. And if we had even a two-stage constitution. Let's say we have a constitution which um, describes Scotland as it is in the Union, and then we have an extra bit of the constitution which is expanded out to show people 
what rights they would have if they weren't inside the, the Union. They would be able to see both how Scotland would look with independence and how small and powerless it looks whilst it's in the Union. And this is something which I think um, would play well, particularly with the public who want information. They want to be able to see graphics which show them how this new Scotland will look, how it will be run, where the money will come from. And one of the key things here is that the, the Growth Commission um, from the outset was pandering to the, the London market, basically to the financial markets of London. It was desperate not to upset the financial apple cart uh, by doing anything in bold. And I think that's a mistake because independence is the opportunity to destroy and sweep away uh, what isn't working at the moment, what is producing poverty and inequality at the moment is the pursuit of wealth. It's the greed of the few impoverishing the many. In a country that's as wealthy as this, with so much in the way of natural resources, we should be living like kings and queens. We should be living like the sheikhs in Saudi Arabia, in palaces and driving enormous electric cars. We shouldn't be guddling along at the bottom without enough money to pay our bills and um, you know, choosing between eating and heating. That just should not exist in the 21st century. So a well-being economy has to be based on the good of the people. And that means the government needs to take control of the resources that are owned by the people. Remember, we are described as being sovereign. Now, if we are sovereign, then these resources belong to all of us. And that means any uh, profits being made from those resources should be shared amongst all of us. And it doesn't necessarily mean that inequality or the, the gap between the wealthy and the poor is going to get that much better. But what would happen is that people who aren't earning as much as others will have the pressure taken off them dramatically. And with the expansion of the state's um, care sector, thousands, tens of thousands of new jobs would be created looking after people who normally would be stuffed into care homes, costing thousands and thousands of pounds and only really um, making profits for the private care home companies which are set up to do this. Now, Scotland does, to its credit, have more uh, public care homes, in other words, ones which are run by either the local authority uh, or charities, than it has private care homes. And I would like to see that change completely so there are no private care homes and there are far more living in helping the elderly in their own homes or helping them to live as normally as possible, as near to their families as possible, to minimise the upset, to minimise the, um, the distress caused and also to minimise the guilty feelings that people feel when they are forced through circumstances to stop trying to care for their own relatives and pass them into someone else's care. These things are all part of well-being. To feel good and to feel well and to feel supported takes a lot of work. And that work needs to be done by someone. And let's face it, there are probably millions of young people at the moment desperate to find decent jobs with decent pay uh, and with prospects and a future. And jobs like this would be for life because we will need these care services for the next few hundred years. Now, while I'm talking about well-being, let's talk about the well-being of the actual physical part of the country as well. Road building, uh, the over building of basically green places. Now, th these are things which will happen. Scotland's population, um, according to uh, economists who, who worked on this uh, Growth Commission report, Scotland's population needs to grow to provide enough young workers to actually do the work because we have stopped producing so many children and nobody's really quite sure why that is. But it could be because women now can choose when to have the children. They're choosing to have them later, they're choosing to have fewer of them. But that just leaves us short of a workforce. So Scotland is basically quite an old country if you look at the age demographics. I mean, I'm coming up for 60 in August and I'm approaching uh, my so-called retirement when I reach 67 and get this meagre, tiny pension from the British state for my trouble. But imagine in the well-being economy, having the wealth pouring into the Scottish government's coffers and swelling the central bank 
boosting the value of the Scottish currency, whatever that is, but also boosting the pension pot for everybody so that we can have much bigger pensions, stay in our own homes longer, be able to support young people for longer if they need it, and also have more left in our will when we when we finally die to leave to these young people so that they can get onto the property ladder, buy their own homes or build their own homes. These are all possibilities. I just don't understand why nobody uh, in political authority is talking about any of this. This isn't socialism so much. This is democratization of resources. Okay, you can call that socialism if you like, I suppose it is. But it doesn't remove the profit from these enterprises. It just gives that profit more evenly to everybody who owns the resource. And we always think of ourselves as being at the mercy of big business. You know, it's all down to international trade deals. It's all down to the horse trading with the big guys who get paid the big bucks. Well, imagine if the Scottish government's agency, if it was the big organisation that all of these companies had to please, they all had to get their prices down to a level where they could win the government contract to supply energy to the domestic market for that year, you would see prices dropping dramatically as those companies fought tooth and nail with each other to undercut one another in exchange for a bigger slice of the pie when they export the surpluses they make. And because we're encouraging them to produce more energy than we need, they create more jobs and we can also state in our constitutional laws that jobs like that need to be paid at a certain level and that we can guarantee that everyone has a right to not just a living wage but a wage which makes them comfortable, which removes the stresses and the fear uh, from their old age. And that is the way you make people feel well, is by supporting them. And if government is for anything, surely that is what it's for. A well-being economy sounds great as a strapline, but it needs to be explained. And I'm not hearing anything about it at the moment. I wish I was. Anyway, that's me for tonight. I will see you all tomorrow. Have a great night. Enjoy the, the lovely weather while it's here. See you soon. Bye-bye.